Welcome to a Graphic 45 Wrap Folio tutorial. In this tutorial, you are going to learn how to take our Graphic 45 chipboard sheets like this one and turn it into a masterpiece like this. So let me just open this up for you so you can see how much fun this elegant folio is. So when you open it up, it's a tri-fold folio, and you are gonna learn how to create these super fun waterfall features. These are so great for storing all your photos, and we are also gonna be creating a gatefold card, as well as some pockets. So you're gonna be able to store lots of photos in here, and this chic and simple design. So this just wraps up just like this. And I'm Shari Philomahala here at the Graphic 45 office, and I'm excited to teach you how to create and learn these new scrapbook techniques. This, of course, is all a part of our Club G45 series. This is volume 12 for 2019, and both this wrap folio as well as the tag trio have been brought to us by our special project designer, Robin Shakur. She has really knocked it out of the ballpark this month for our last of the 2019s. So we are excited to tell you that for 2020, we are gonna be continuing our Club G45. It's just been such a success, and we've had such a great year creating along with you. But we do have some fun uh, announcements to go along with our 2020 Club series, and those will be leaked soon um, in our newsletter as well as on our blog. So be sure to stay tuned for those exciting details as well. But if you're not yet a Club G45 subscriber, it's easy peasy to do so. You just want to uh, look in that description below or click on the link g45papers.com and you can subscribe there. But of course, we want everyone to learn how to create a fun folio like this one. So you can go ahead in the meantime, grab your supplies, grab some chipboard and some decorative paper and let's start creating. Your volume 12 kit, you're gonna get some Life is a Journey ephemera cards. You get 32 pieces in there. Those are double-sided and come in two different sizes. You're also going to get a sticker sheet. You get actually two different sticker sheets in here that are six by 12 inches each. You're also gonna get some clock keys. And the Life's a Journey patterns and solid paper pad a lot of fun papers that we're going to be using in here and then you'll be getting a pack of 12 by 12 inch black chipboard sheets these are a medium weight and are perfect for albums and folios and things like what we'll be creating today to get started on our wrap folio you're going to want to locate your uh, project sheet if you're not a club g45 subscriber or you didn't buy the kit you can always print this out from our website at g45papers.com and the first thing we are going to do is we are going to be cutting some of our chipboard sheets so we want to be cutting down we want three pieces that are going to be six by ten inches and so for our chipboard when you're cutting this um, we just suggest using like the Fiskars precision trimmer like we have here works great you can just get it nicely in one simple cut uh, you can always use a metal ruler and a craft knife or a metal ruler and a rotary blade if you're looking for some good a good video on how to cut chipboard our brand ambassador Jim the gentleman crafter has a really great video on um, how to cut chipboard and there's a lot of great tips so I'll be linking that video uh, down below as well so we'll cut out three of these in total that are six by ten inches and then we're gonna be cutting out two spine pieces that are gonna be one inch by ten inches and then you just want to keep a piece of that scrap paper or scrap chipboard around. Uh, we'll be using this later as kind of a measuring unit or a shim. I'm going to grab two of these black patterns and solid sheets that have the automobiles on there, the transportation sheets. And we're going to trim down off this little info strip to make this a 12 by 12 inch. 
So we'll have two 12 by 12 inch sheets. And then we are gonna be adhering these together to make one big sheet. So in your kit, you should be getting some premium double-sided tape. I've got the extreme tape here, but it will work the same. And we are gonna just use this kind of as our guideline to just go down one of the edges so we can adhere these two pieces together. And in the instruction sheet, it says to use a, a fourth of an inch dry adhesive, and that would work as well. But because we're gonna be cutting off some excess, the half inch also works just fine. So I've gone down and put that neatly on one edge. And then using our bone folder, we're just going to make sure that has a nice good bond on there. And then once we've done that, we can pull up our backing. Once we've pulled up our backing, we can go ahead and adhere these two sheets together, making sure everything is going the same direction. And that they're nice and straight. Now we're going to turn this over, making sure everything is right side up on the other side. Start scoring. So making sure our pattern is right side up, we are going to start scoring at the one inch mark. So on the left hand side, I'm going to score this at one inch. And then I will also do that on the top and bottom. So on my longer side, I'm gonna score this at one inch. And because my scoreboard only goes to 12 inches, I will have to do this in segments. So now I'm just flipping it over and I'm gonna continue on that one score line at one inch. And you'll see when I flip this back over that now it's been scored from the both sides. So now I've scored my left hand side and my bottom side and I'm gonna do the same with the top. I will not be scoring my right hand side because we'll have some excess that we'll trim off. So scoring at one inch. And then now I'm gonna flip this over so it's on the pattern side and then score again at an inch until I have it scored completely. As you can see. Now we're going to start putting together our folio base. So just add some of your nice heavy duty adhesive on one side of one of your six by 10 inch panels. All right, so now that we have our adhesive on the back side of one of our six by 10 inch panels, we can go ahead and start on the left hand side. So we are just gonna be using those score lines kind of as measuring marks. So I want it flush with my one inch score line on the left as well as the top and bottom. And once you've found your placement, you can go ahead and burnish that down. So next we're going to be adhering down one of our one inch by 10 inch spine pieces. Uh, I want to leave a nice little gap so it has room to move. And we want it to be about an eighth of an inch, which um, works out to be about one of our chipboard pieces. So I'm going to just use that kind of as my measuring mark. I'm going to have that upright at a 45 degree angle against the other piece I had just adhered down. And then once we have that in place, then we can find right where we want this one inch piece to go. Like so. And voila. 
And then we'll just keep adding our pieces to our big piece. So next we're gonna do another one of those six by 10 inch and we'll adhere down our second spine piece. So then we're just going to adhere our last six by 10 inch piece. Now, once we're done with that, we can measure an inch from the right hand side of our chipboard and then uh, go ahead and just trim off your excess. So now we're going to be trimming off some of our corners, just we're going to be trimming off all four of our corners, but we want to leave about an eighth of an inch off from the tip of that corner and then mark in a diagonal where we'll be trimming. So you'll just wanna do that with all four corners. Once you have made your marks, you can go ahead and take your scissors and trim along. Of course, if you have done this before and you're a pro, you don't need to do the markings, but it's always nice if you're a first timer out there just to give yourself a little guideline. Like so. Now we're going to begin molding our paper around what we've created. So I'm just going back over our lines with my bone folder. Just kind of going to reinforce helping that paper bend where it needs to go. And once you've done that, then you can just start slowly bending your paper where you want it to go. So it's kind of like creating a book cover here where we're just going to be wrapping our edges, making this nice and sturdy for years of enjoyment. Next, we're gonna start adding our adhesive. If you are using a half inch adhesive, I would just do this one at a time, like so. If you're using a smaller adhesive, you can do all of your edges and then pull them up as you go. But since we're doing a half inch adhesive, I have put my first strip down and I am gonna pull that up. And now I'm gonna add a second strip just layering it just a bit, making sure that I don't go off my edge. Like so, and then trim at the edge, and then using that bone folder, it's always nice to get a good bond before trying to pull up your adhesive. That way it's gonna stick better onto your chipboard as well. Pull that up. I'm just gonna bend over my excess to make sure it's all gonna be on the inside. And now I'm just gonna slowly start adhering down 
my design paper onto my folio base. So starting from the middle, I can just go from one edge to another, working out any wrinkles or air pockets. So now I've just moved over to one of the sides and I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I added my first layer of dry adhesive. Now going back over there. And if you are working with a smaller adhesive, you don't have to cover up this whole one inch space. I am just doing so because since I'm working with a half inch, but you do want to do adhesive next to your chipboard as well as on the end of your cardstock paper. That way, you know, everything's going to stay in place where it belongs. So now that we have our first layer down. The next thing we want to do is we are going to find that excess where we had our corner and tuck that in. And then once that's been tucked in like so, then we can start adhering down this one inch flap. So it's going to give us a nice professional looking corner. And then we'll do the same with the other two sides. All right, so now you should have a folio that looks like this. So everything is coming together beautifully. Look at those nice professional corners. So this technique you can use over and over again when you're making uh, albums or boxes. It's a great way to wrap things up. So now that we have done that, we can take our bone folder and just go through each of our little spine areas. That way, when we start to crease this all together, Everything's going to bend beautifully. Like so. And you can see I started a little early and I started folding before I did my creasing. So I do have a tiny bit of tearing there, but not to worry because I can always take some ink and just go over anything like that. Some black cardstock, we're going to cut out two pieces that are going to be three inches by nine and a half inches. And then we are going to do some light scoring vertically on these at seven eighths of an inch. And then again at two inches. And we'll do that with both. So the second one again, seven eighths of an inch and two inches. All right, so after a little bit of troubleshooting, I've decided to add some more adhesive onto the back side. So in the directions, it says just on the top bottom and right and left hand side, but I'm just going to pretty much cover my spine base with some nice dry heavy duty adhesive. So I would advise you to do the same and do this with both. So once all the adhesive backing is off, we can go ahead and adhere this down to our spine piece. So I'm just going to find about the center of my spine, if 
from top to bottom. Once I have that placement, I go ahead and drop it in the middle. And then using my bone folder, I'm just going to slowly pull this out like so. And then once I've done that, then I can go ahead and find my score lines and just kind of reinforce those. Like so. And make sure we're getting out all those air pockets. And then once we have everything in place, then we can go ahead and start slowly folding on the creases. So use that adhesive and put a bunch on the spine, filling up this black piece and then work out all those pockets. And then let's go ahead and start folding this together. That way we don't have any bubbles in the center of our spine and it's nicely adhered on there. You can see because I had to tear take mine back up. There is some, a bit of some paper peeling up here, but that's going to be just fine because we're going to add all sorts of decorative papers and fun things here. Step two, we're going to start decorating the inside of our folio. So we are going to cut one piece of the red typography paper, and we're going to cut this to be five and three quarters inches by nine and a half inches. And then we're going to adhere this down inside the left hand panel of our folio. And we wanna make sure it's centered as well as covering up our black uh, spine piece here. And one thing to note, you wanna make sure that your red paper is not gonna be going over any of those uh, creases on the spine. Now we're gonna be creating our first pocket. This is measured from, uh, we're taking a black piece of cardstock that's six inches by four inches. And on the left hand side, bottom and right hand side we are going to be scoring this at a one quarter of an inch so one fourth of an inch score so we'll be creating our pocket with some fine tip scissors we are going to be cutting out that little square that we've created when scoring for our pocket and I'm just doing just a little bit outside of our score lines. That way I won't have any bulk at all when I'm folding my pocket together. And add just a bit of liquid or thin adhesive to this fourth inch space. And then we are going to fold those over and then create our pocket. And then adhere your pocket down, leaving about a fourth of an inch on either side and the bottom. Then from the blue bicycle page, we're gonna cut this to five and a quarter by three and a half. And this is just gonna be right in the center of our pocket. Adding a nice little splash of color there. And then using our stickers, we are going to be matting these onto some black cardstock. That way when we adhere them onto our project, they have just a bit of a black border. So it makes each element pop just that much more. And so I'm taking two blue banner pieces from our stickers and a red banner piece. I'm going to also use this Life is a Journey frame piece. This is, as you can see here, two different pieces, but I want to keep those as one. So I'm going to put down my frame first and then I will put my sentiment right back where it belongs, like so. And of course, you could always leave that out and that way I'm in that black space behind there. You could use a white gel pen or a gold gel pen and you could write in what your folio is all about. Maybe it's from a cruise you took in 2019. It would be a great space 
for that. So now that I have adhered down my elements, I'm just going to loosely cut around. each of those. So when I do my fussy cutting, it'll be a lot easier. So, all right, so now we can get started and I want to leave just a bit of a black border around each of these elements. That way they're just going to pop onto my project. And you know, this is also something you can do with your fussy cuts that you can always mat them onto a coordinating cardstock. And then when you adhere them down, they really just pop right off the page as well as add some nice uh, stability to your cuts. It's cut out and it's looking good. With a circle piece, if you have some scallop scissors, it's a fun way to add some extra texture and dimension. But if you don't, or you want to keep it nice and simple, just go ahead and give this the nice black border. And then last but not least are three banner pieces. These ones are Nice and simple straight cuts. So just from our sticker sheet, we have this super cute little yellow daisy sticker border. And that's gonna go just across the top of our blue bicycles. And then we'll just trim this to fit like so. And then we can start adding on our fussy cut sticker pieces. We're going to add our sentiment just right on the pocket. And then with our banners, we're going to be creating a nice little swagged banner look. So I'm not yet pushing down on my elements. That way I can still move them to make them fit. And then once you have the placement you like, you can go ahead and adhere those down. And then last but not least, we're gonna take this Let's Sail Away sticker and adhere it up there. Now taking another piece of black cardstock, we're gonna cut this to six and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And then this is just going to be our little card insert that goes in our pocket. So you can go ahead and score this on your scoreboard if you want, or you can just match up your corners and use your bone folder. And now we have created our little card. We are going to add our dream, discover, explore, drive sentiment to the top. I've added adhesive just to the sides and the bottom. So if I did want to use this as an extra little tuck spot, I have that option. So far, so good. And of course, if you want, you can round those corners to take it to the next level. But if you want to keep it nice and simple, you can leave it just like that. And then we're going to take a blue piece of our patterns and solids, and we're going to be cutting this to six and six by four inches as well. And this is going to go on the inside of our card. As you can see, uh, this one has the nice rounded corners and inside the blue mat has been rounded and inked as well. So if you want to uh, go the extra mile, you can always add those rounded corners to all four of your card base as corners, as well as the mat and ink those edges. But if you want to keep it simple, especially if you're doing a, um, you know, a bunch of these for presents or for family members, you might want to keep it simple and it still looks really nice and polished. So once that's done, this is just going to slip into our pocket we've created. Step three, we are working on the inside right of our folio. So uh, I've cut a piece of our red bicycle paper to be eight and a quarter by nine and a half inches. And then 
with my bicycles right side up, I am going to be scoring at five and three quarters inches. So five and three quarters. We are scoring and this is gonna be what creates our pocket on our right hand side. So just add some tape to the top and the bottom from that score line to the right hand side and then go ahead and adhere that down. Now we have our pocket. Now we're gonna flip this over and add our adhesive onto the backhand side. And now we can take our super cute bicycles and adhere them down. Making sure not to go over our, where we fold in our right hand side and keeping it nice and straight. From our sticker sheet, we're gonna take the time. We're gonna take this take the time sticker and we're going to adhere it onto our pocket. So just on the edge of the red, just nice and flush. Adhere that down and trim to fit. Grab this ephemera card and we are going to add some adhesive just on the back side of the left hand, the back left hand side, just about a third of the way. And then once we've done that, we can find the center of our pocket and we're going to adhere this on the center from top to bottom as well as on the red part. Once you found that, you can go ahead and adhere down. We wanna make sure that we didn't add any adhesive where our pocket goes, so our pocket is still functional. And now we're gonna grab our largest key from our clock keys. With the largest clock key, we are gonna take about eight inches of twine and we are going to tie a bow around our clock. Just nice at the top and you can use uh, any coordinating ribbon or twine that you have. I'm using a wax twine. If I like this uh, wax twine more than the standard twine just because with all the wear and tear the wax twine really holds up with the years of love. And now we're going to take our Adventure on the Go sticker and mat that on our black cardstock as well as this cute little gear flower. And then we'll uh, do the same like we did before and just uh, cut around. And for this tiny little gear piece, I just loosely cut around it. And then if you want to go in with your fine tip scissors and then just cut in a V shape to get into each of those little gears, that's going to give you the nice detail that you're looking for. All right, so now we can kind of play around with the placement. So if we want our key to be on the left-hand side of our ephemera, not obstruct, obstructing the message, I'm just gonna, I haven't glued my key down yet, but I am gonna just hold it in place while I adhere down my sticker pieces like so. And then now just taking some nice, uh, liquid adhesive, some heavy duty um, glossy accents works great for this, but also uh, E6000 does as, as well. So we are just going to adhere our key down. Got a little too much. He 
adhesive there. So now we can find our placement and let that dry in place. And the last thing we're going to do on a right hand panel is just insert some ephemera cards. I'm going to use this find yourself and take the time. Um, this is also a great place for you to tuck in any of your photos or uh, brochures from any of the events that you are uh, keepsaking. Now we're working on our center panel of our folio and this is we are cutting down this blue floral piece to be five and three quarters by nine and a half. And this is just going to adhere right in the center of that panel. And then from the black typography page, we are going to cut out two pieces that are going to be three quarters by nine and a quarter. And these are going to adhere onto our spine pieces, making sure everything looks just as nice as can be. It's also a great way to use up your scraps and extra bits of paper. Next, we're going to be creating our waterfall. So for the base of our waterfall, we need a piece of cardstock that's going to be four and a half inches by 11 inches. And then for our individual waterfall flaps, we're going to need um, five pieces that are going to be four and a half by four. So that's five of these pieces. Now we are going to be scoring these. So I'm going to be scoring a half of an inch. And so this should measure to be the four inch side. And I'm going to measure it at a half of an inch. So once I fold down my flap here, this will be three and a half inches. So I'm going to do that with all five of my black cardstock pieces that measure four and a half by four. So just And then we're going to go ahead and crease on all those score lines. All right. And now we're just going to add some adhesive onto those half inch flaps. So add your adhesive and then we can start to put together our waterfall. All right. So at this point, if you have been rounding your corners like you did with your card, um, or you want to start, this is a great point to round uh, these bottom two corners here as well. But if you want to keep it straight and simple, we are going to go ahead and do that on this example. But you can see here is what it looks like with the nice rounded corners. So if you want to round those corners, just grab your corner rounder and do that with the bottom two corners, not with your flap. So we are going to start at the top of our waterfall. And so I've folded this back. So I'm going to be adhering my adhesive flap onto my base. And then this part, this edge will be flush with the top. So keeping it flush with the top. Can go ahead and adhere that down. And then we're going to take our second piece, peel off our adhesive, fold this back just like we did with the first piece. And then this will be nice and flush underneath our first piece. So you can see it's starting to come together. We've got our first flap on the top, our second one, and then we'll just keep going uh, down the waterfall. We're going to measure a half inch from the bottom of our waterfall and then that's where we'll be trimming off the excess. So 
So once we've measured and drawn our line, we can just go ahead and trim off the rest. And we have our waterfall element. Now that we've completed our waterfall mechanism, we can start to decorate that. And the first thing we wanna do is to create some little mats. So we're gonna cut six pieces down to be four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And we're gonna take two of the red typography, two of the blue bicycles, and two of the purple automobiles. And then from our ephemera pack, we're gonna grab this spokeswoman uh, four by three ephemera card. So now we are just gonna add some adhesive onto starting with our red photo mat. And if you have um, rounded your corners on your pieces, you are gonna to wanna to round the bottom two corners of all six of your mats as well. But if you're leaving it plain like me, we can go ahead and just start adhering. So first up is that red piece. And now just to have a little extra pizzazz, we're gonna add this spokeswoman ephemera. But of course, if you wanna leave this open to put in your own photo or to put in a title there, uh, you're always welcome to do that as well. So we've got that going and now we're just gonna start working on through. So next up is a purple mat. And just finding our center placement. And that's going to adhere down. And then once you add your photos on top of here, just having that little extra pop of color behind is really gonna make it look nice and polished and bring it all together. And then we are gonna do our blue bicycles, which is one of my favorite pages. So there we have it, red, purple, blue, and then we'll repeat the pattern. And now that our waterfall's all decorated, we're gonna take 28 inches of coordinating ribbon or twine. Again, I'd suggest if you are using twine to use a waxed twine so it doesn't fall apart on you. And then we're going to uh, wrap it around vertically over our waterfall. And then we'll go ahead and tie that in a bow. So we've added our adhesive to the back, and now this is gonna go just about a quarter of an inch from the top and equal, and then the center from either side. And once found our placement, just go ahead and burnish that down. I'm just making sure that I'm taking my bone folder in the same direction as my waterfall so I don't pull anything up. And now we can trim off the excess of our twine. If you want to take this to the next level, you can always even tie these little ends in a knot. So what do you think so far of the rounded and inked versus the straight square edges? You know, I really think that they both look nice. And if you want to go the extra mile, of course, uh, go ahead and do that, but if you do leave it nice and straight, I don't think anyone's ever going to notice. Now we're going to do our gatefold card, and we're going to do this nice and simple. So we've cut our piece of black cardstock to two and a half by 11 inches, or an 11 and a half by two inches. And um, just to keep it simple, we are just going to fold this in half, just finding our corners, and then crease. And then from here, we're going to take both of our edges and fold those into the center. 
So we've got one and and two, like so. So now we have created our easy gate fold. And because we are adhering this onto our folio here, it you know that extra score line doesn't even won't even affect us at all. From the black topography, we're gonna to cut this to be five and a quarter by two and a quarter. And this is going to adhere on the inside of our gatefold, just right in the center. And then from the red topography, we're gonna to cut four squares to be, or I guess rectangles, to be two and a half by two and a quarter. And those we will adhere on our little panels on the inside and outside like so. And then take 20 inches of your coordinating ribbon. And then we are gonna just tie this around the center horizontally. Tying this shut. So finding your center spot. Now we can go ahead and tie this. like so, and then we can adhere this down. When you're adhering this down, you want it to be about a fourth of an inch from the bottom. So uh, the top and the bottom are nice and cohesive. And then just burnish and trim off any excess or tie in little knots at the end. the inside of our folio and it's looking beautiful now it's time to decorate the outside so we're just gonna flip this over making sure everything is right side up on the inside so flipping this over So taking 36 inches of ribbon I'm using an one inch satin ivory ribbon we are gonna find the center point of our ribbon. So we're just gonna kind of mark mine with creasing it. That way it'll hold it for a little bit. But if you have a ribbon that doesn't do that, you can just, um, just keep your finger on the center point. And now that this is flipped over, we are going to be um, adhering our ribbon down. But we're only gonna be adhering it down onto the right hand and middle panels and the spines. We will not be putting any adhesive onto the left hand panel since this is a tri-fold folio and it does wrap onto itself. So where the center of my ribbon is, I want to find um, my second score line from the right on my spine. And that's where the center of my ribbon is going to go. So I'm just going to adhere this in the center top and bottom onto that second score line from the right here. And then so it'll go on both spines, the middle panel and the left-hand panel. So using a nice uh, dry adhesive, we are going to adhere this down. So after that's been adhered down, we are gonna cut out two pieces of the purple floral to be five and three quarters by nine and a half and one piece of the red bicycle that's gonna be five and three quarters by nine and a half. And then from the black topography, we're gonna to cut out two pieces that are gonna be three quarters by nine and a half. And then from black cardstock, we're gonna cut out a piece that's four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And then we're gonna take this Get Lost Together ephemera card and we're going to adhere this just onto our black photo mat. 
And then once we've added our ephemera card to our black cardstock, add some adhesive on the back. You can adhere it all down or you can do it like I have and I've only adhered it in a U shape. That way if I want to use this as a pocket, let's see. Now if I want to use this as a pocket, I can go ahead and stick a little something in there as well. Now we can adhere this onto our left-hand panel. So remember, we did not adhere this part of the ribbon down to our left-hand panel. So this is just gonna go right on the center underneath that ribbon. And now we can adhere our other pieces down. So over the spine, making sure our wording is right side up. Just adhere this down and this is gonna go over the spine, uh, the paper. And then we will do our purple piece next in our center panel. Centering that from left to right and then matching it up from top to bottom with our other pieces and continuing on make sure those words are right side up adhere that down and then last but not least our final purple panel and this is going to be the front cover And then from the red topography, we've cut a piece down to five and a quarter by nine inches. And this is going to be on our front cover, just adding that extra layer of depth. And it's going to go right in the center of our purple panel. And then taking this life's a journey, not a destination ephemera, this is going to go right in the center of the red. So it's all just stacking up. Each one of those layers really adds a lot to our cover. Locate your ephemera card that looks like this and has this woman riding her bicycle on the back side. And we are gonna be fussy cutting her out, including these purple blooms. So just roughly cutting this. Now we can begin our fussy cutting. So I'm gonna cut alongside her back, just leaving a little bit of that white showing.
done. Your fussy cut piece should look something like this. Using some foam adhesive, I'm using some black 3D foam squares. Um, these are from Scrapbook Adhesive, but you can also find these on our website with a bunch of other scrapbook adhesives uh, there for you to purchase. But um, once I've added those on, I like to just make sure to add a little pressure to the back of these. That way when you're pulling off the little papers, they come off nice and easy, making it a lot faster of a process. And of course, if you don't have any foam adhesive, you can always use some of that uh, scrap black chipboard that you have left over and adhere it onto the back side. You could even layer up a few pieces if you wanted to, and then glue that on. So now I'm just gonna match this corner with my bottom purple corner and adhere down my beautiful cyclist. Two circle purple and red circles and mat those on our black cardstock. We're also gonna take one of those blue pendants. But once we've done that, then we can go ahead and trim around like we have with the other stuff. We're going to adhere down our blue banner. This is just gonna go up in the top left-hand corner of, let's see if I can pull that up, of our ephemera card, but I put it a little too far close to my sentiment. So, it's gonna go right there. And then we're going to adhere our purple piece down here and our orange will just go right over the top. And now we're gonna take eight inches of our coordinating ribbon and one of our clock keys. I'm gonna be grabbing this cute little one with the center. Um, now we're gonna take eight inches of your coordinating ribbon and then from your key pack, we're gonna grab this clock key and just go ahead and tie a bow at the top. And then using your heavy duty liquid adhesive, we're going to adhere this down. And with some liquid adhesive, we're gonna add that to our key, as well as I'm just adding a few more pop dots to balance this out. And then this is gonna go right on our front cover like so. And then we'll set that aside to dry. And once you are all dried, you can go ahead and once you're all dried up, so once that's dried, you can go ahead and tie your bow and then trim off your ribbon ends to look nice and beautiful. And there you have it, a beautifully made wrap folio, perfect for so many photos and keepsakes. We hope you enjoyed creating this project along with us. Be sure to share your projects on our Graphic 45 community page on Facebook or with us on Instagram using that hashtag Club G45. And thanks so much. 
happy paper crafting.